Hey everybody, thanks for stopping back into the Red Barn. In today's episode, we're going to use the fixturing table, do a little TIG welding, and see if we can't get the last of the drivetrain mounts fitted to the car. Let's see how we do. So it's a beautiful day here at the Red Barn. You wouldn't know it because everything's closed up and that's because it is windy, windy, windy. I don't know if you can see things moving around out there, but boy, oh boy, is it windy. And that means uh, TIG welding is not happy with any kind of wind. So if I open up the big door, there's way too much air movement and it blows the, uh, the shielding gas right away from the weld and makes a big mess. So we're gonna keep things closed up. And if you hear noises in the background, it's because there's some stuff that's being blown up against the side of the barn and it's making some noises. Anyway, so what we're doing here today is we're gonna just go ahead and get the uh, the removable bungs tacked onto the that fourth transaxle mount under tube that we made. And the way I'm doing that, I just wanna give you a quick sort of overview of the, of the fixturing table, at least one application of the fixturing table. And that is what I've done is, you can see, I've located this little bung and I've locked down a 90 to keep this thing dead vertical. And then I've clamped the tube in place. But when it comes, there's some of those noises I mentioned. But when it comes to this side, uh, it's just a random width. It's the width that ended up being the width of the engine cradle. So I wanna be able to locate this one vertical too. So when it slid in place, all I've done is, and you can see these, these are little ball adjusters. And when you wanna lock them down, they, uh, it just drives a screw down into here and forces that ball out into these fixture table holes. And so on this one, I'm using a one of these 90s that slides, and you can see all I'm doing is I located the tube in a position where when I slide this thing out, it just holds this exactly where I want it. And then I just lock this down, and I can fixture this disconnectable part right in place and I'm just going to go ahead and put a couple of quick tacks on it. Um. safely unclamp it and final weld it. Now, when that cools, this piece gets bolted on, completely fitted, and then we'll fit everything into the car and get it all stable and in position exactly where you want it, and then these get tacked to the engine cradle. Nice. Okay, so the welding's done on the tube side of the connectors, and what I've done is fit the cradle side of the connectors on Crank these down so they're exactly, you know, in position, nicely aligned, super cool fit. Got those exactly where I want them. Now we're gonna go back under the car and get this all fit. Now, remember we've got our, our little locator nubs. They're gonna fit right into the bunk the threaded bung opening, and again, I keep calling it the threaded opening. We're not gonna worry about the fact that it's threaded. And then I've made this super high-tech positioner out of wood. Anyway, so one of the things that is important, I have some leeway with the up-down of this angle, uh, but 
What I really want to do is make sure you can see here that as I've got I've got it ground clearanced out. And what I'm trying to do is make sure that it's no lower than that, and it's not. It's going to be okay, at least with this piece of wood here. But I want to do a quick check here too. And what's interesting is there's this one little plate of all things with one little bolt that sticks through it that's just a tick below you can see as i try to get by it with the straight edge touching each side of the bar or of the hoop it just bumps into that a little bit that's not the end of the world i can put a little bump in the skid plate that's planned for this uh right there so not the end of the world um but it's nice to know and always good to check. So what that suggests is this is the highest that I want to take the thing at the back um, in terms of where this would be located. All right, so knowing that, uh, I'm in a position now where I can tack these to the engine cradle. <laughs> I just put on there as tacks will do as it shrinks is after welding you know about the the distortion it's a shrinking distortion what it's done is it's pulled because I did a tack on the outside it's pulled our hoop to one side so this is now separated so what I'm gonna do is see if I can hold it forward with the hand I have with the torch Still have this thing holding it at the level I want and see maybe I can use my leg to hold it over it's not holding it in at the height I want it this is when it would good be good to have a little shop helper but I don't have one so I'm gonna try my best to do this. It's not working very well. But I will persevere because I always do. So we're just gonna get that to there, get that to there, and get that to there. get my foot on the pedal. Now we've got that one tacked. All right, let's get a couple on the opposite side. I got enough tack on there to hold those in place. Now I can unbolt this piece. And it's funny how just with those two tacks, you know, it's like, man, that thing, welding's amazing, you know? Look at that, boom. Now something else that you may be wondering is, this is only 065 wall, right? And it's like, is that gonna stabilize this whole thing from moving? Remember, there's going to be a skid plate under the whole drivetrain, and this is going to essentially serve as the frame for the skid plate. So this is going to be tied in to a, a big surface of support material. So in all, as they say, that's not going to go anywhere. But look at that. I'm happy. I'm happy, happy. It looks good. But here's, here's really what I was after. Is, yeah, it steps down from inch and a quarter to inch, but once that's welded all the way around that second 
connector and it's a nice looking TIG weld. That's a sexy transition as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's not a bracket. It's not, you know, a jog. It's not anything. It's nice and in line with everything else. And um, yes, you won't be able to see it, but uh, I'm going to take those style points every time I can. And that's going to be some right there. Well, I think you can tell I'm pretty happy with how that all turned out. I hope you enjoyed that episode, but let me know what you think. Leave me a comment or any questions down below, and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Thanks again for watching. Y'all take care.